stuck inside of Oasis with the Big Cypress Blues again. Well, this is a farewell song to an old friend and a, well, a friend, he's still there. I can call him on the phone. It's hard to get in touch with Rudy because he's always, he's like driving around doing Uber, something like that. And uh, he moved up to Central Florida where he's from. He's always from Central Florida and these stories about Sanford. And the pool hall in Sanford, Florida. Or not Sanford, it was out in Rockledge. In Rockledge, there was a pool hall. And there was a guy that, when he was growing up, ran the pool hall. And he'd always kind of blow smoke in your face. And you were just a punk kid. And, and that's when the pool hall was the, back in the center of town. So, what about Rudy? What about Rudy? Let me just say this, that Interpretive Rangers, Oasis Visitor Center, it's a visitor center. It's at the halfway point between Naples and Miami on the Tamiami Trail. And it just cuts through the heart of the Big Cypress Swamp and the Everglades. And just when you can't think it can't get any more remote, you run into Oasis. So there's this huge lumbering building. The building kind of resembles Rudy. He was just kind of a, a mountain... He was kind of like a Sasquatch of a man, really. And that's what you see when you look at Oasis. There was just kind of mildew on the building, and it was this huge tank of a building that I don't know what the architectural appeal was, but it was a gas station. And the whole area was going to be developed. They were going to build a big gas... Not a big gas station, a big airport. And... uh, Then the conservationists got together with the sportsmen, got together with the politician, got together with the, you know, the coastal um, and everybody there at a state, regional, and local level. It was a time in the late late 60s, early 70s, where people were coming together, you know, with this idealistic vision to get things done. And they got it done, and they they saved the Big Cypress Swamp. And... uh, that's how the preserve got established, and that's uh, that building though was a carryover from. It was a gas station. It was a gas station and an auto repair shop, and the idea was the whole place was going to be developed. So it got converted into the visitor center, Oasis Visitor Center for Big Cypress National Preserve, and the building is an odd building. Uh, we'll say that. But there's some magic there. It's one of these hot spots of the universe. It's hard to really describe. I just, I just love being there. It's um, in the modern day. Everybody thinks of the L28 levee as being the boundary between the Big Cypress and the Everglades. But historically, it was really kind of where Oasis was. And you see the cypress sort of shift there. And there's this different flow path that feeds down into Roberts Lake Strand on the right side compared to the left side, uh, the west side, where you get into kind of the heart of the more traditional big cypress. So anyhow, what's my point? Let me think about this. So yeah, Rudy was stuck inside of Oasis. You know, it's in the heart of the Big Cypress, but he was stuck there asking questions, answering questions from visitors. And, you know, he was, uh, for 10 years, he, he worked in Oasis, and he got a lot of the same old question. You know, why are the alligators out? Do you have those alligators in the cage? And he'd say, no, they're in the canal. They just hang out there. The alligators kind of like humans, or they become habituated to them. And the canal alligators in the canals aren't like any alligators you see anywhere else in the swamp you know they're kind of waiting for a feed out it's illegal to feed the gators but they must get fed because uh um you know they they just kind of hang out there it's a deeper part of the canal it's uh suffice it to say at a lot of visitor areas they're usually canal uh gators hanging out but then rudy would get into the deep historical discussions and that was right up his wheelhouse and to a person everybody will say wow we've never you you never met a historian better than rudy i mean he doesn't have the phd he went to get his masters but the proof of his mastery and scholarship is just talking to him he has a photographic memory he became a student and just knew every book there not only does he know every book he knows every word he can quote 
specific passages and pages. Um, he reads and he rereads books, and he's just a font of wisdom, um, and he's fun to talk to. And what's great is the chemistry he can have or could have with any visitor. When they would come in, they, they a visitor might have been from the swamp or been at a certain area, and Rudy would listen to that and then weave it into a, a historical element, and the whole elev um, conversation would get elevated. So it was just... Um, he was a conversation artist, really. Uh, his one down, not downfall, he just, he was, he was often a very hungry. He, so you'd have to like feed him food and then all the memories would really flood back if he was was properly fed. Or he had a Coke, if he had a Coke. I think he is now um, forsaken, or not forsaken. He's no longer drinking Coke as much, but he will on occasion. So, Rudy was just, uh, he worked at Oasis, and when he went away, we had to do, a, I didn't have to do a song, we, we, we did a song, I wrote a song, Bobby Angel, on, that tried to capture, you know, what, the essence of, of, of Rudy, and it was, you know, to that Dylan song, Stuck Inside a Mobile, with the Memphis Blues again and are stuck inside of Mobile and it was stuck inside of Oasis with the Big Cypress Blues again and then the premise of the song is oh he's always stuck in an Oasis and he'd rather be out exploring it you know in an airboat or down the Florida Trail and um, when we used to commute together he'd always lame and oh you get to go out and do this and that and the other I'm kind of stuck to the ball and chain there but I think he loved it too you know because in his downtime he would hit the library and he nobody used that resource as as well as Rudy and even to this day he's, he's now left I mean his farewell song was uh, a couple years ago but you just, I call Rudy up and we'll have a, a talk about the history of the Big Cypress and he's just you know he's still reading that stuff so he's, he's a real resource even though he's not there on site and uh, so I was driving by there and I remembered Rudy's song and I was like oh I'm gonna do some video footage of it and I'll put his song to video and you know maybe he'll look at hoping he'd look at it nostalgically and laugh and cry and have a flood of the old emotions going back and I think there's nothing like video that does that so yeah if you're driving by between Miami and Naples stop at Oasis I, I think it's a real hot spot of the universe it's always intrigued me it's always spoken to me and I always say if, if the walls of a wall if the walls of a building could speak you know how much they would have to say and if, I was talking to the wall when I went there to Oasis yesterday, and the wall just started talking. It was we just started talking, and all he kept saying to me is, "Where's Rudy? Where's Ranger Rudy? I miss that guy. Oh God, he read all my books, and he had just the best things to say. And Oasis was so missing Rudy. So I said to uh, Oasis, the wall." It was a lime rock uh, wall made with some Tamiami formation limestone. I said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay that message to Rudy, and he'll be down as soon as possible. So, Rudy, uh, from Oasis Building, there. Yes, we said farewell, but there, we're waiting for your return. So let's 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 organize that. Well, thanks so much for listening. That's just a little inside scoop on what stuck inside of Oasis with the Big Cypress Blues is all about. It's about a person. It's about an interpretive ranger. It's about a friend and a colleague and a historian, Ranger Rudy. But it's also about Oasis, and I think that's what Rudy would say. He'd say, that's, that's an ode to Oasis, and it was a privilege to be there and be a part of Big Cypress National Preserve and, and Big Cypress the Big Cypress Swamp for the 10 years he was there. But we miss him. We miss him. So. A lot of people, you know, move through your life and move through the Big Cypress Swamp and nothing 
symbolizes that more, illustrates that more than being on the Oasis boardwalk just watching all the traffic go by. The tractor trailers, the motorcycles, the RVs, people slowing down, speeding up. It's, it's just as relaxing watching the traffic as it is watching the water. So it's, it's, it's a place to do both. So that, that, thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.